Hello and welcome to a spirited debate. I'm Lauren Green. You know, sugar is a product we take for granted. We have it in our desserts, cakes, and candies. We also put it in our coffee and tea. But rarely do we connect it to human trafficking and human slavery. Father Christopher Hartley has. For 20 years, he witnessed firsthand the bitter taste of the sugar industry in the Dominican Republic, where hundreds, if not thousands, of Haitians have been enslaved in sugar plantations under the most grueling conditions. His experiences have been documented in the book, Slaves in Paradise, a priest stands up for exploited sugarcane workers, and also in a documentary, The Price of Sugar. Father Hartley joins me now. Welcome, Father Hartley. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's a very disturbing kind of uh, uh, documentary. I was watching parts of it. Describe the conditions under which these workers cut cane. I arrived in the Dominican Republic in September of 1997. I was the pastor of St. Patrick's Little Cathedral, so I was very ill-equipped to confront everything that awaited me on those plantations. I arrived at the province of San Pedro de Macorís, where most of the sugar cane of the Dominican Republic is sown, grown, and harvested. And uh, when I arrived, I had no idea what human rights were. I took my own for granted and basically believed that the rest of the world was living with the same rights as I did. But uh, soon after my arrival, I discovered that most of my parish uh, comprised these huge plantations in which were dispersed these hamlets called bateyes, where men, women, and children were living in horrific conditions which meant, uh, for example, that they could not leave the plantations because they were guarded by mm -hmm. men on horseback and a rifle, because children as young as four were sowing the sugarcane fields at uh, the tune of 25 cents of a dollar yeah. per furrow. We're seeing some of the pictures right now of the Dominican Republic, the, 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 the side of you know, the tourist side, which is Absolutely. very bucolic. This is a very stark contrast between what's going on in the sugarcane fields there. Well, horrendous, so, so horrendous that, for example, one of the most luxurious resorts is Casa de Campo and uh, the electricity where Bill Clinton, where the Bush uh, father and son have spent some of their winter vacations playing golf in the, um, on the lap of luxury, the, the electricity is fueled by the sugar mill where these Haitians are harvesting uh, sugar cane for next to nothing. They're not even paid with money. They were paid, they're paid in vouchers. Um, for about 80 cents of a dollar per ton of sugar cane harvested. Yeah. And believe it or not, 200,000 metric tons of that sugar ends up on the American table. The United States is the only buyer of all the sugar harvested in the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic is the largest exporter of sugar in the world into the United States. Um, you know, there are five large sugar companies in the Dominican Republic, and the largest is owned by the Vicini family, I That's think it is. Are, are they aware of the conditions uh, in their own plantations, or are they just oh, too far removed? Fully, fully aware. I mean, thanks primarily to the media, I couldn't be more grateful to you That's having me on, on a program such as this one. Thanks to the media, my little voice screaming my lungs out in the middle of a sugarcane field when nobody could hear me 100 yards away from where I was standing, um, that, that message has gone, gone very, very far, to the point that the United States Department of Labor is in the middle of an investigation uh, um, researching all the complaints and the accusations that I made against the Vicini family, the Fanjul family, and the Campoyo family in the Dominican Republic. You know, sugar is the most uh, important agricultural industry in the Dominican Republic, and you were talking about the U.S. imports more sugar from them than any other country. That's correct. Obviously, so, so what can the, the U.S. do? What, do they, what, you would, what would you have them do? Well, uh, first of all, it's good to remember that the Domin Dominican Republic has signed a free trade agreement with the United States called CAFTA-DR, and on Chapter 16, in Chapter 16, it's very clearly spelled on what living and working conditions that sugar cane or any other product can be imported into the United States. And it's clearly uh, stated there that certainly human rights and labor rights must be respected at all costs. Well, that is not the case. But the United States continue to violate its own agreement, does not respect the own, its own treaties, and continues to import this sugar um, and, and unchecked and the, uh, the State Department is fully aware of this, the Department of Trade is fully aware of this, and as I said before, the United States Department of Labor is in the middle of an in ongoing investigation which, on which it's dragging its feet for the last mm -hmm. four years, doing virtually nothing, and allowing this sugar to come um, into the United States quite undisturbed. 
uh, think of the um, of the Van Hul family, two brothers, Pepe and Alfie Van Hul, best friends of all the presidents of this country. And uh, if you remember the Kenneth Starr report, there is the recollection of Monica Lewinsky saying that she remembers uh, Mr. Van Hul putting a phone call into the Oval Office when she was in his arms, in the arms of Bill Clinton. Wow. And this is in the Kenneth Starr report. This is not gossip. This is not any media outlet. Not, this is an official U.S. document. Wow. You know, there's so many more questions that we could be talking about and so many more issues because it's an incredible documentary. And I had no idea what was going on, so I encourage people to probably, um, you know, seek out uh, the book. Uh, the book is Thank called you. Slaves in Paradise, A Priest Stands Up for Exploited Sugarcane Workers. And the documentary you can watch on YouTube, I believe, which is called yeah, correct. The Price of Sugar. That's correct. Thank you so much, Father Hartley, for being it's here. It's an honor to be with you. Thank you for helping me. Thank you. And for more news and headlines, go to foxnews.com. I'm Lauren Green, and thanks for watching. Thank you.